Hello and welcome to this tango tutorial video Solo Technique Focus Lapis Lapis can look like this, can look like this, can look big, both sides can be backward, forward, forward, backward. What should we think first? One thing that helped me a lot is to think of it as a sideward projection. And this sideward projection, I reach either through going first front, reaching the sideward projection, and then having the collect. So by that, it's kind of this egg shape back and quarter of a turn forward. If I do the other version, it's first back and then coming to the side projection and then having the egg shape forward. One common mistake is that you do the lapis and you do it completely round and by that you might hit your partner. <laughs> and for example, one position where we have the lapis very easily is when we have the exit from a forward ocho and here if she feels the can you do it more slow sorry mm -hmm. if she feels where is the sideward projection then she will always have the the right um, movement or line to draw on the floor that will be independent of where i step Later, we might want to play with it that I really invite her to touch me. But then it's something that we need. So for here, for this video, we are still in the basics and we want to practice how can we do the lapis safely and, uh, and without uh, having problems afterwards with our partner. We have the two most common places. The one was up from the forward ocho, so here and she does the pivot and then she goes for the lapis and we continue. And the other one most common is from the cross. So we have the cross and here the lapis and we continue. Or we have the parada afterwards and we have a different exit. But let's take these two for the example. So practice with us once. I start standing on the left, so projecting my right. So I have the side projection and back, side projection, and back, other side, side projection, and back, side projection, and back. Now, I go a little bit, uh, no, I go backward first, so I have backward, meet the side projection, and egg shape for front. Backward, meet the side projection, and I come back, other side. Backward, side projection, come back, backward, side projection, come back. For the timing, I always like if at the beginning there is a little impulse, so it's like da, and for the second part after the side projection, I try to slow the movement down that afterwards maybe I can give the impulse for the next step that comes or for the waleo that comes or whatever that comes. If I do the all regular, then I most probably have to wait. So it's more interesting to have an impulse of the beginning and then a kind of like slower movement that there is no break with whatever comes afterwards. Take the other leg. I know we did both legs. Mm -hmm. So we start with forward. Again, I stand on the left, I work with my right. And I said forward, side, projection and egg shape. Forward, side, egg shape. Other side. Forward, side, egg shape. Forward, side, egg shape. At the moment, we were not talking about when do we try to expand, when do we release a little bit. With the lapis, as with many other things in tango, both is possible. So sometimes it's easier to have a release to go for this position. So I'm more expanding and when I do the lapis I'm releasing. And in order to come back, I'm expanding again. The other idea is that I start with expanding and to come back, I release. I start with expanding and now I release. So 
both are useful. Uh, for me, for example, when we start the dance, I usually go for more the expanding one. So when I try to in, encourage or invite Aska to have a lapis as the beginning of first movements, it's more from this and the same is then afterwards when we walk. Whereas when, we, when I invite her from the cross, for example, more often it's the cross was the expanding and afterwards it was a little bit more releasing for the lapis. That was all. Keep on practicing both sides, releasing and expanding. And don't forget to work from your standing leg. That was just about what I wanted to say. <laughs> you could read my mind. Yes, Fantastic. so it's the standing leg and I think of the hip through the standing leg. I manipulate my hip and by that the active leg, the free leg is working. One bonus exercise. You can try to have from this movement of expanding to open your hip a little bit to start pivoting quarters of turns or you could just not pay attention of how much and when you have this you open a little bit and by that you will start to, to pivot and turn left and right as well. This is what leaders afterwards will need when we have the uh, sequence with the hero that here we open more that she will come. Exactly. So, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy practicing.